kind of start off with uh, just explaining when I started listening to music and when I started playing guitar. Okay, how old were you? Well, I was 13, 14. Me too. 13, so, 12, 12, I mean, 13. you know, when you f life happens, skateboard happens, and mm -hmm. you know, start playing. Actually, at that time, there weren't too many seven-string bands. Right. But I listened to all of the seven-string bands. So it was, you know, Steve I, obviously, Morbid Angel, Dream Fitter, Meshuggah, Korn. Yeah. I remember the Life is Peachy got released. Yep. Like way back. Yeah, that was like 96, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was like, I've been playing guitar for like two years. Uh -huh. And it was, blew me away. Like I never heard anything that down tuned before. It's like, what the hell? And I had to get a, I got a, like an RG7620, like back in the day. You, you guys had the universe and all that. It was really inspirational. Thank you. And now today, you. you know, I'm- I appreciate that. Pleasure's all mine. I'm very happy to be here and to be, uh, that you're actually out touring. And in Stockholm, for that matter, right? too. I mean, what I the hell is that? I love this city. This is amazing. It's an amazing city. The city is beautiful. The culture, the people mm -hmm. are so nice. Yeah. I don't feel scared when I walk down the street. No. You know, I've, I've met a lot of artists and I've met and done a lot of interviews. Mm -hmm. But you guys make me nervous because this is <laughs> not, you know what? This is, this, is, this is my teenage years, right? Yeah. And uh, it meant so much to me. Wow. What is this? Like this nice guitar you have here? This is a signature model that I developed with Ibanez. Um, he has one that he developed with ESP. ESP. Yep. And I think Brian, if I'm right, it was always his dream to kind of be with ESP as a kid. Mm -hmm. Mine was always Ibanez because when Steve Vai came out with the universe and uh, Passion and Warfare, right. I was like, oh my God, I got to have one of those guitars. Yeah. And then... Yeah, uh, George Lynch was my guy. He's from yeah. the band Dokken. And so... So he was ESP. I mean, it was his idea. I was with Ibanez for so long. Yeah. And then I wasn't getting, I don't know. It just seemed like they got different people. Uh, they, you know, some of our old friends quit and everything. Yeah. And so I was just, I, I wasn't feeling connected. Yeah. So, but uh, I started talking about ESP. He goes, you should hit him up. Try it. And I did it. And I love it. Everton? Everton, yeah. yeah. How long have you been playing? using those well he started using them he's like you got to try this and i was like oh, i don't know and then i had a couple put on my guitar and we used them on recording some a couple of albums mm -hmm. yeah and we we're like it saves so much time yeah. him and i especially in a live scenario where we're both playing heavy right hand mm -hmm. and pulling on the strings and chords we can get away with a lot more and you probably never sounded better and we never sounded better because yeah. everything's perfectly in tune yeah the whole show. Yeah, which was, we always used to fight that back yeah. in the day. It was like Especially changing like guitars. The, the floating bridges and all and that. And if yeah. it's cold outside, you know, you know. Yeah. So we, do, we developed this and was, uh, this has been on the market a couple of years and um, I wanted to keep it clean and just kind of a simple, this actually I think has bare knuckles mm -hmm. pickups in it. Yep. And uh, so this was one of the prototypes that they did for me. <laughs> Um, it was one of the first ones I did. It's one of my favorites. Nice. And uh, you're not using any overdrives or anything. Uh, the tech t told me that. Yeah. Straight in. It's going. I'm using the, the gain from the amp. Yeah. But Fishman pickups pushing a little bit. Or, yeah, like, he's got Fishman. Yeah. yeah. Fishman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the growly. Yeah, yes. he likes. But ba back to the tuning thing. Mm -hmm. If someone goes out of tune, we know it's the bass player instantly. Now. Before Actually, it's like, who's that a do? You were doing that the other day. I was playing, um, uh, Ivan has made me this uh, seven string universe, right? Which is, I mean, sorry, it's a gem, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. gem with the handle, right? And I asked them, and I had to ask, like, they had to get Steve's permission mm -hmm. because that's only supposed to be a yes. six string. I want a seven string, anyways. I was playing that, it has the floating Floyd Rose in the middle of the show, oh. and he looks over at me, he goes, Are you out of tune? And I go, Maybe. Because <laughs> it was cold. It was yeah. a cold night. It was night. cold. Yeah. And, I said, and I looked down at the... I was like, oh shit, it is probably me because I'm playing this, which is the floating bridge. And I was like, ah. Oh. But it was it was the bass player. Was it? Yep. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, maybe not, actually. Because he said he wasn't. It was probably my guitar oh. because of that, you know. Yep, it was That freezing. bridge was uh, giving, pulling, the yep. whatever, which way, right. but... And all the effects, like I saw, the, you saw your pedal board was small as hell now. Yeah, he, like, he downsized. He downsized, right? yeah. As I get older, I want more simple. Right. And he's like Mr. Freaking Spaceship with like 40 pedals. I love having old analogs like right in front of me. Yeah. And 
I make mistakes. It, I tend to make more mistakes by hit, not hitting that switch or this switch. Okay. But I'm uh, when it comes, I'm a little bit of a control freak when it comes to selecting the the, the right effect. Yes. Because if some guys hire somebody, like they'll have their tech or somebody do the the switching, and every time I've done that, mm -hmm. they've made so many mistakes, mm -hmm. and then I get mad at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is on me. What? We're freaking doing an interview. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was aggressively loud. It's also the thing. I mean, if you're feeling it, and you want you yeah. don't end at the one, then should switch to another sound immediately. I always yeah. do that. And yeah. listen, we do. Um, these songs we play them every night mm -hmm. for you. So I like to add. Oh, I'm gonna put a little phaser on this yeah. part just because I get a little. I like to just. It's live. Yeah. I wanted to have the little variations here and there. Mm -hmm. The new album, Requiem, is, it sounds like to me like an old fan, like old corn. So here's the feel, thing. How do you feel about that? I love that because we're always trying to push the boundary but not alienate our core fans. Yes. And that, and just widening the lane mm -hmm. of what we do, try to challenge ourselves like mm -hmm. with chords and mm -hmm. structures and choruses and hooks and melodies. He writes some of the most am amazing melodies. Thank you. You're welcome. And it, it's a, uh, it's one of those things that you will, you don't want to leave what you do because you do it well. Yep. That's why people like our music. How is it then today to write this type of music when you're you know, you have kids, you have family, this is, you know, touring is a lot easier than it was back in the day. Like it's, back when you're a younger band, you usually have a lot of struggles. How do you keep yourself being angry to write music? Well, you don't have to be. You don't have Look to be. Look at the world. <laughs> it's true. We, 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 can, we can draw inspiration from whether there's the news, yeah. friends, yeah. whether it's family. We know that going through, we all at different points go through challenging moments. How about frustration at home? Yeah. Then you get in the studio and take it all out. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You always, every day, there's, you know, something to draw inspiration on, whether it's your own personal stuff and um, or something from the past. You mm -hmm. can always or just create a, a, a vibe and an atmosphere and let Jonathan's lyrics kind of yep. mm -hmm. set the stage for him. Right. We're, we did a thing in London the other night, or was it last night? No, the night a before last. Ago, yeah. And. He just was like, I'm, Jonathan's like, I'm finally happy in life. Yeah. Because well, he's gotten to a place of peace. And yeah. I go, I go, so does that mean corn records are going to suck now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but that's not how it is. We're drawn to the dark things in life, mm -hmm. all of us. You know, it's like movies, mm -hmm. um, TV shows, uh, you know, just so it's always going to come out. Even if we're happy, it's going to come out. And you know what? <clears throat> now that we're older, uh, we can learn how to balance the light and the dark in our lives. Before it was just like this is all darkness and we didn't know how to control it. Yeah. But now we have clarity and we have with age and having children and kids and having different things in our life balances the light and the dark. And when you know, we, we like to jump in in, in the dark with, uh, with the art we create. Mm. But we don't live there. No. We know how to go there to, 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 to play the music and whatever and then we, can, we know how to put that aside and then joke and be happy yeah, in the yeah. afternoon Take inspiration of yeah no walking around together gloomy and... all day yes yeah. exactly right we're most of the time we're joking around and clowning around all day on tour yep yeah. guys you know guys get together it's just yeah. a bunch of freaking clown i like your duran duran shirt can we talk about that no <laughs> what did he get in love? a duran duran yeah. shirt a fan gave it to a to him i'm just it's jonathan's i'm borrowing it oh okay nice. jonathan's a big duran duran fan yeah oh, okay I like him too. I like him too. I I don't I hated them growing he up. He hated them. But but I like their newer stuff. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. it's actually okay. pretty good. Yeah. What do you listen to today? If you listen to something? A band called Spirit Box I yeah. really like. Of course. Yeah, they're yeah, they uh, they're, they're getting a lot of good um, traction and I found this uh, a new band out of the UK called Wargasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um they're cool. I like the way they do electronics. Yeah. Um this other band, they're more like a kind of drums and droney. It's called Wardruna. Uh, it's like vocals and percussion. Right. It's very kind of like tribal. Okay. I was listening to Opeth the other day. Born Der Club of Gore. Oh, shit. You will like Sounds that. Heavy. It's it's they're German. They're from Germany. Mm -hmm. 
they've been around 20 some years this is really it's mellow it's chill spooky oh you'd like it i know so uh before we end do, do you know the term will it chug Woo -hoo. will it chug no no okay so i have a video series on youtube where it's like i take any piece of gear and the name of the series is will it chug <laughs> so it just sounds funny. I, it could be like a. What does that mean? Chug, you know. Chug, chug, chug. Oh! Chug, 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 chug. So. Um, chug, 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 chug. That's what, amazing. What, three, two, one. Will, Will it chug? chug? Awesome. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Thank you so much, guys. Dude, thanks, it's good dude. To meet thank you. you. Talk to you. How long have you been doing it? Like, when did it start? Like, yeah, really making money for you and stuff. 11, 11 years? years? You've been doing it for, it's amazing, uh, making yeah. a living for how long? Well, uh, I mean, I've done it for 11 years, but then I also joined, uh, I played in Six Feet Under for a while. Oh, oh okay. Nice. And then I joined The Haunted. Oh, you awesome. Did. That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, so, but YouTube is my main thing. And okay. I've been doing this for a, for a while.